All right, so let's just review what we did in that little experiment and why we're doing it. <coughs> We've already talked about the fact that there are three different types of friction values that we are interested in. Uh, when it's moving, called kinetic for movement, also dynamic might be referred to as. Usually it's given with a symbol, a little mu and a k to indicate it's different from the static one and that's different from the limited friction. The experiment you were doing was basically to determine this guy, the limit of friction, just moving. Now the theory is, or not the theory, the fact is, that up to the limit of friction, the static value is exactly the same. So whatever you've determined for the limit of friction, that's going to be your static value. But when movement takes place, the kinetic value may be just a little bit less. Not too much less. Now, before we move on to that, can anybody think of why? Once it's moving, why is the friction value slightly less? Think this. Look at the picture again about... Because of the um, angle towards the way the force, direction of force from gravity? No, that hasn't changed. If you did it really, really carefully and you got to that point where it was just sliding, right? one of the things that um, Alexia did was that well, just as it started to slide, you might have just lowered it a fraction, another angle down, and it stopped halfway down. Because what you'd done is taken away that motion by letting friction react backwards and slow you down again. Because the friction value is slightly higher than what's needed when you're, when you're moving. So it's actually available to stop you as well. In that particular circumstance, it did. But that's not what I'm asking. Why is it less when it's moving? Well, it's really quite simple. Have a think about when things are actually sitting together, they get to rest into those holes a lot further. So they settle in and get grippier. Heavier objects given enough time sitting on a surface will actually start to penetrate a little bit better. So if you had left a brick sitting there for five minutes or so and then tried to lift it, you would find the angle was slightly higher than it is when it's just freshly put down. But when it's moving, as you're moving these things, the time it takes to move is going to determine how much the friction value is because it's now going to be collision points, not interpen... Think of it this way. When I get it to move, I have to go up the side. So I've got to use some more force to get up and over. When I'm actually moving, I'm just whacking it across the tops, banging into the surfaces as it goes. I don't have to lift it up as much because it's not down as far. So because it's not down as far, it's not interpenetrating as much, you're only hitting the tops of the ridges as you go. So this accounts for that tiny little gap, the drop in force between the dynamic, uh, static and the kinetic or dynamic friction. Right. We have been working on this one though. We get a value for that. So let's have a look at some of the things we did. Um, if we've got two of them, I'll put both of them up and we'll see what, how we've gone. Brick on metal, who had a brick on metal? Yeah. Okay. You just want that decimal? Just the decimal place. 0.36. 0.36. Right. Did you have a brick on metal? Okay. What about brick on timber? Have a quick look through the list and see, get them ready if you've got them. Or have you got one ready on top? What have you got there? We've got particle board. Brick on particle board? Yeah. Where's that one? Uh, brick on particle board. What'd you get? 0.46. 0.46. So brick and brick, two different white values, two different surfaces. Okay, keep going, anything else? What else we got? Uh, brick on wood was 0.65. Brick on timber. Timber. on timber, that one there, 0 0.65. Yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah. So clearly the timber being a much rougher surface than the metal has more penetration going on because the brick hasn't changed, but the surface values have changed greatly. What else you got? Rubber on particle board, go on. 0 0.55. Right. Brick on timber still seems to be the rougher surface at the moment. Rubber, you'd think, oh, well, rubber's a bit grippy, yeah. but that's a smooth sort of surface, that rubber, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. If it had been pushed into the surface, there might have been more grip going on. So that's a degree of inner penetration caused by the load. Anyway, keep going. What else have we got that's up there? Because you've called these out before. So brick on laminex, who did that one? No. Didn't somebody do that? Okay. Uh, Feld on particle board, somebody did that one. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, 0 0.52. 0 0.52. Slightly less than the rubber on particle board. So the rubber's a bit grippier than the felt. 
Interesting. Anybody else? Keep going. What else we got? Felt on timber? Uh, yeah, 0.53. 0.53. Interesting. The particle board here is not much different, but the brick here and these two are very different. Anyway, keep going. What else we got? Wood on wood, we got 0.65. For what was that? Timber on timber. Timber on timber? Yeah. 0.65. Yeah. Okay. Felt on metal. Felt on metal. Where's that one? Felt on metal? Yep. 0 0.58. 0 0.58. Yeah. yeah. That was interesting. Because the timber should be grippier than the metal surface because the metal surface was polished. Who knows? It's interesting. The interesting one was the friction required. That's on rubber on cloth, which was 0 0.62. Okay, rubber on cloth gave you a 0 0.62. So we didn't do brick on laminex. Okay. You can see what we've done though. We're just trying different surfaces and we're getting values. Now these are not definitive values. They're not going to be, because it's not a really controlled uh, um, situation. But there are some, I'll give you in the notes that will finish up on, online, on this surface area, on this particular subject area, there is a table which indicates some of the values for it. And one of them is the wood on wood, the coefficient of static friction for wood on wood is between the range of 0.4 and 0.7. Uh, we've got a wood on wood, haven't we? Timber on timber, 0.65, within the range that is tested and proven. Now, why would it be a range? Because not all timbers are exactly the same. And not all surfaces are exactly the same. So you have to test this over a large range of materials. Wood on metal, between four and six. 0.4 and six. We got a wood on metal, didn't we? Um, did we? No. Oh, we didn't. Okay, so it would have come in at 0.4. What else have we got? Um, cloth on metal, felt on metal. Did we do that one? Yeah, yeah between 0.3 and 0.6. So that's within the range. So you guys are coming up with the figures that are in the tables for these materials. Now there will be really high materials and there will be really low materials. This one, brick on, on metal, is the one that surprises the most, isn't it? Because it's, you know, you think bricks are heavy. Um, that metal surface, that polished laminated metal, or it's actually painted metal, um, that surface, the, it's more the polymer that's actually there than the metal, but uh, it's still a slippery surface. So that's, that's quite a slippery situation. All right? Slippery, not a good word. Um, low friction coefficient, easier to move. No, there was no lubricant involved, which is why I said slippery is not a good word. All right. Lubricants, when they come into play, is that they will separate that material. And an oil is a film between the two surfaces, and therefore they're not running into each other, and that's why it's slippery. Yeah, just to, to, to sketch that for you, what, what will happen is if I had those two surfaces, the same sort of roughness sort of level, but I separate them by putting oil in here. Yeah. Right. So that's fluid into there of some sort. Then clearly, when I try to move, there's no connection here. They're not hitting. They're flowing. And so you've reduced your friction right, right down. And, and that... Um, has to do with a number of other things with the oils too. The, how the oil resists. There's a term we give to the, the flowability of the oil in this situation. It's known as viscosity. And when you look at uh, the numbers on your uh, uh, oil for your car, you might have a 20W50. Right? And those are the viscosity readings for when it's in one circumstance at a certain temperature and another circumstance when it's a higher temperature. And you get different levels of viscosity. And so you'll know whether it's a good material for um, a diesel engine or a, um, a car in the snowy area as opposed to one that's in the desert where you don't need thicker oil in the, in the desert perhaps because it'll get thinner as the heat goes up and all that sort of stuff. We'll talk about that more when we start looking at engines a bit more. All right, for today though, are we okay? Big term, coefficient of friction, symbol, mu, it's a value and that value is determined by the surfaces and it's easy to calculate if you do a simple experiment based on the angle that you need to slide along. So gravity is helping you make that, that call. Where will it come into play? All right. What will happen is in the next group of lessons I'll be talking to you about solving problems involving friction. But I led you towards that a little while back. The brick on the slope, going down the slope, mg which is mass times gravity 
times the coefficient or the, the component of force going down the slope because it's actually a triangle of forces right, where the actually it's not that one it's going to go down the slope so that's mg sine theta this is the normal where the load is being resisted by the surface the load on the surface that's why it's not falling through the surface and this is the mass times gravity acting down so it's a vector diagram closing up right, so they're the forces that are going to add up so there has to be a resistance force that's your friction if it's going to stay there fair enough and that's the limiting just moving force so that value is going to be determined by the surface but when it starts moving it's going to be plus something plus some other force and that force will be that you have overcome on angle now mg and the sine has created a situation where it's larger than the limit of friction and whatever the extra component is you've made this longer this angle longer you now have an acceleration component that's moving the brick down the slope so it's going to be plus the acceleration force if you do that you move the object got it okay if you take that away or lower the angle then the friction force will act against the movement and slow the object down and that's why we're talking about it now because it's a braking mechanism you can use the value of the forces between the surface the coefficient of friction as a way of calculating how much you need or how much force you're going to get from your brake surfaces so that's where we're heading and why we've been doing it so friction's going to come into it's the mechanism by which you can stop a moving object a force removing the force all right so we'll leave it at that for today i think that's just about time yeah five minutes to go and that'll do us